In this series of videos I'll be attempting to repair this machine. It is a CCI PDP-8 clone, uh, or at least that's what I believe it is, that's what the owner has told me it is. I've never seen one before. If you have any technical information on this or any manuals, schematics, then uh, please let me know. It's completely dead at the moment, doesn't light up, uh, there's no indications whatsoever. Um, I haven't uh, powered it up, this is just what the owner's uh, told me. Um, but we will power it up. It's not something I would normally do when I'm repairing a machine. And this is a repair, it's not a restoration. Um, but in this case, I believe the owner's had this switched on for um, long periods. So um, I will um, turn it on and see what happens. We'll have a quick look around before we do that. So as with uh, all computer systems of this era, um, very discreet in design. There is no central processor in this. It's all completely discreet mostly TTL logic. These are huge boards, about 18 inches by 12. And almost every function of the CPU is divided onto a separate board. So it's a very nice arrangement. Uh, there's upwards of, uh, I guess, 2000 ICs in this machine. So as uh, we might expect, huge linear power supplies. And uh, this thing weighs a ton, and it's mostly because of these uh, transformers and power supplies, but uh, it is a large rack as well. Um, move around to the back. So we can see, excuse the lighting in here, hopefully you can see all this. Um, a lot of fuses, um, separate power supplies. And uh, the reason there are separate power supplies is because some of the supplies are negative and having them floating like this means they can be arranged uh, however you want. Uh, just bear in mind that means that not all the grounds here are ground at the other end. So um, just be aware of that. And looking around the back of the motherboard, we can see that it's in a fairly poor state. Got some corrosion down here. Connections are very dirty, a lot of corrosion. They'll need cleaning up. Probably too dark for you to see anything, but there's a lot of corrosion on these. Most of the loose, uh, but this will need cleaning up. There's corrosion on a lot of this, so it's looking in a fairly poor state. Okay, so what we'll do is I'll get it uh, connected up. Incidentally, these cables go down to uh, what would normally be the uh, drives. They've been removed, so these don't go anywhere. Get rid of that. Uh, so they shouldn't interfere with the operation of the machine. Uh, but uh, I'll get the um, power connected and uh, we'll see if the magic smoke escapes. So I've got you looking at the power supplies here because uh, I suspect if anything spectacular is going to happen that's where it's going to be. I've got the three power cables plugged in. In fact there are four power cables. There's another one down here but that just drives the uh, fan. There's a fan tray that sits underneath the, um, the, the card rack and it is important that normally this is powered up um, because of the arrangement of the card and uh, the way this power supply is arranged, these are all linear, so it's just a transformer uh, rectifier capacitor, and they feed raw 10 volt supplies up to three regulator cards. And um, if the fans are not running on the rack, then you will fry the regulator cards in a few minutes. Um, they're under heat sinked, so um, they get extremely hot very quickly in this type of arrangement. So without the fans running, uh, you will fry them very quickly. Uh, so I'm going to power this up, um, we'll see if there's anything uh, spectacular going on, and uh, go from there. Okay, so I've powered this up. Now I said that um, we shouldn't run this without the fans running, and uh, I left this disconnected because I wanted to listen for any unusual noises. You can often get a lot of information from sounds that come out of these. Now, there was an initial dimming of the lights in the room, so I think that's just as the capacitor is charged up, which is a good sign but they're extremely quiet. Now they're not switching supplies, they are linear, but even so when they're passing a lot of current uh, they would normally make quite a bit of noise and these are almost silent. You're not going to be able to hear it or the difference on the um, camera microphone, but if you're familiar with these machines then you'll know the noise I'm talking about and this just does not sound right and there's no heat coming out of the rack at all. So um, we'll move around to the back of the machine and we'll see if there's any power coming out of this at all. Looking at the back of the machine we can see that the power indicator lights are, are, are on. 
Uh, again, I don't have the fans running, but I suspect there's very little power going through this, so I think it's safe to leave it powered up, at least for a short time. And what we can do now is start measuring the supply voltages. So we should have uh, about 14 or 15 volts, or maybe higher if there's no power being drawn from this. Uh, so 17 and a half volts, and then we should have 10 volts or so. Okay, so I'm going to go through and test all the rest of the supplies. They should all be the same, they should all be giving us uh, about 10 volts on the output. I'll go through, I'll test all of them and see if they're all intact. Okay, I've been through all the rails and they are indeed all intact. So, um, the 10 volts, the 14 volts is present on uh, all the outputs, but there's just, it seems like there's no power being drawn. So what I'm going to do now is get the current clamp. Okay, I've got it set to DC and we'll start seeing if any power's been drawn out of these. So about half an amp. And there'd normally be several amps, at least three or four amps or more being drawn out of each of these supplies. It's going to lower the camera a bit so you can see the um, test clamp. Okay, so hopefully you can see that um, in half an amp. So no real power being drawn out of any of these and they're all pretty much the same so about 350 milliamps there so almost no power has been drawn out of um, these supplies uh, which uh, does tend to indicate the system is not running at all and uh, I suspect um, the most likely cause is a failure of the regulator boards. Even if the system wasn't running, if there's, um, the 5 volt regulators are working, it should still be drawing power. So um, I'll go through, check the regulator boards, and uh, we'll go from there. So as you can see, I've removed one of the regulator cards. I went through it with the multimeter and um, really all this is, it's a triple uh, regulated analog supply and um, you can probably see looking at the colour of the heat sinks that uh, the heat sink on the left has been severely overheated. Uh, this is one at the top of the, um, the rack so it looks like this may have been run without the fans going. So uh, I started measuring the pass uh, transistors and sure enough two out of the three on this uh, do not appear to be working. So I did the usual um, reverse diode check on these but we'll just uh, go through them, have a quick look. I've also cleaned up the board and um, polished up the gold contacts. They're fairly badly pitted and corroded. Now what I use on something that's very badly corroded like this, as long as it's hard gold, don't do this with immersion gold but with hard gold you can do that. Uh, I use one of these. This is a self-flatting uh, block. It's normally used for cleaning up PCBs prior to etching. But as long as you're careful and don't overdo it, it makes an excellent job of polishing up uh, gold contacts, but it will go through the gold very quickly if you're not careful. So as soon as it gets shiny, stop. And so I've taken the devices out. I've also cleaned the board. It was fairly dirty. I think the owner's cleaned this machine, but it may have been a while ago that he did that. And uh, I've taken off all the excess uh, residue. And uh, what we can do now is look at the individual devices. So if we bring in the multimeter, I've got it set to diode check. And what we can do now is do a kind of a reverse check, typical uh, where testing these. So we put the multimeter on one way round and we should get no conduction. Reverse the probes and we should find we have what appears to be a diode and then going between emitter and collector we shouldn't have a short which we don't. That one seems like it might be working we we'll move on to the next one do the same thing. Now I've got the leads the same way round when we had a diode showing on the other one and there's nothing showing on here at all. We'll reverse it try it again and still nothing. So that one's dead. We'll try this one. Reverse the leads. And 
that one's partially dead so we have two failed junctions on this device and one failed junction on this device we'll just check between collector and emitter and nothing so the main danger with these is there's no real protection as such on um, the supply board so if these pass devices go short they can pass the full DC rail directly into the logic boards and that uh, can ruin your whole day uh, another way of testing these we'll just uh, clean up the bench uh, we can use a power supply so I've got the device connected to the bench power supply the supply is set to 5 volts with a current limit of 0.5 amps and um, I've got a uh, 150 ohm resistor connected to the positive output as well and uh, we should be able to switch this device on it's an MPN Darlington transistor so um, we should be able to easily pass enough base current with a 150 ohm resistor to switch this on and we should see the supply run up to the limit if it is indeed doing that so that one's fine if I apply the resistor to the base you can see that we're getting half an amp so that one appears to be working that's the one that tested good with the multimeter uh, we'll go on to the second one incidentally I think this one's been replaced at some point because the leads are much longer than the other ones it's got a different date code to the other two these two have an identical date code but this one's different and I just uh, don't think whoever replaced it trimmed the leads don't think it was done recently um, the solder looked fairly old but I do think it's been replaced at some point okay it's no death short which is good we'll try turning it on okay we're getting 25 milliamps but that's just what's flowing through the 150 ohm resistor into the base it's not switching on so that one's faulty and we'll go on to the third one which also tested bad using the multimeter so no dead short which again is good we'll try and switch it on 25 milliamps again but it's not switching on so uh, these two devices are indeed dead if you're interested these are MJ3000s so um, let's get a 10 amp Darlington transistor and um, I'll get some of those ordered and we'll get this board replaced I'll go through the other regulator boards I suspect we've got similar problems in those as well if you're interested I did reverse engineer um, one of these um, so I've got the schematic uh, here if you're interested in looking at this they're based around MFC 6030A regulators that's what that's what this device here is so um, that you can still get them but they're rare and expensive we also have some test points up here for adjusting the output and so this is fairly typical if you look at the spec sheet for the 6030A then this is a, a linear regulator and this arrangement allows you to uh, use a, uh, an external pass transistor and you can drive it directly from the output of the regulator and um, it just allows you to, to control much higher currents also we've got this arrangement uh, on the input to the pass transistor and um, this resistor here is the big um, wire wound resistor and that's just for current um, limiting so we've got this arrangement here that allows for uh, current detection current limiting and it shuts down the voltage if the current goes too high at least it's supposed to uh, of course it can't do that if um, this pass device is, uh, is shorted there's no crowbar on this so um, it is kind of a precarious arrangement um, and could just be as simple as we've got some shorted uh, tantalum caps on some of the balls and it's just taking this out uh, but it's a fairly simple arrangement we've got the test point here you can see where that's connected to and uh, we have this input here that um, this is the supply voltage for the regulator and this arrangement allows this to be shut down so um, there are only six external connections for each of these uh, blocks there's a lot of edge connections but um, there's only six uh, connections three on each side and that's just the connections for v in v out uh, naught volt vs and the test point and um, the secondary naught volt out there's a link uh, up here uh, so very simple uh, arrangement as you can see there are three pots just to adjust the current limit and voltage out and um, once I've got the uh, replacement parts what we'll do is we'll power this up on the bench uh, see if the output voltage is correct before we put it back into the machine 
and I'll do the same thing with the um, other two regulator cards, uh, bearing in mind that some of them are negative supply outputs. So that's it for this uh, video, um, introduction to this project. I suspect it's going to be a fairly long-term project. Uh, as I say, if you have any information on this machine, uh, what it might be, schematics, anything like that, then it would be much appreciated. It would certainly make the uh, repair go a lot more smoothly. This is not a restoration. I'm just uh, uh, trying to get it going. The owners asked me to try and get it to, uh, to run. Uh, yes, I've seen the uh, restoration series online. It is in fact this machine, so um, uh, there's no information in there that I don't already have, but if you have any additional information, it would be greatly appreciated.